I was at Yabu the other night and my lovely wife tells me if I eat too much of the fresh cabbage, nakakapautot yung kung sobrang dami ng cabbage na kinakain mo. And I was like, oh great, okay, thanks for the tip, I've already eaten a lot of it. Probably too late. Hi Makaban, it's Chris here and you know how a lot of you have been enjoying like this Filipino food cultural video has been doing kind of little tweaks and tricks that Filipinos do while eating. Well, I thought today I want to address some of the big Filipino food myths out there. So firstly, what is a myth? So a myth is typically a story that will explain sort of a particular practice or behavior or a natural phenomena. And it normally has some sort of traditional or folklore origin. And over time, it has become generally accepted as true. But people don't really question the factual underpinnings of the story or the scientific underpinnings of it. That's what we were talking about when we're talking about a myth. So you guys know that there's that show called Mythbusters. So they go around and they look at a particular myth or like urban legend or something like that and then they're going to tell you they're going to scientifically and rigorously like research and test it and using the power of science definitively answer whether that's just a myth or whether it's busted or whether it's like somewhat plausible that maybe it's true but the results are inconclusive so we're going to do that today with some of the top filipino food myths and i'm going to bust them or, or prove them right so the first myth we're going to look at today is this one about eating ants and apparently this can make your voice sound better I know what you're all thinking like, Urbano, you clearly have never eaten an ant in your life. And you would be correct, and that's why I don't have a singing voice, clearly. Ayoko sana na ikaw ay mawawala because if I did eat ants, then according to the myth, I would have a voice like Sarah Heronimo. It's that simple. And in fact, I called Sarah. She didn't answer my call, <laughs> but she didn't answer first to confirm whether Sarah Heronimo ate ants growing up. But the idea is that if you eat the ants, then this will somehow generate some reaction in your throat, which will make you a better singer. Uy, Okay lang yun. Kaka gumanda yung boses ko. Tingnan mo, kahanta pa naman ako mamaya. Ang halik mo, na-imiss ko, bakit iniwan mo? Ang halik mo, na-imiss ko. I don't even know if I'm the right person to answer this one. I feel like this would be a better question probably for Mikey Bustos, who, aside from his Mikey Bustos channel, he also runs a channel called Ants Canada, and it's just literally about ants. But I feel like if there was a Filipino to ask an ant-related question, Mikey would be the guy. So Mikey, if you're watching, please leave a comment below, and we probably will actually ping you, mate. And in fact, maybe Mikey Bustos, maybe that's where his secret sauce is from, because he's released some pretty cool music videos lately, and maybe it's because he's eating the ants on Ants Canada. If anybody is watches my show and watches his show maybe you can just be like hey Mikey it would be hilarious if like 20 people or 50 people all just started asking Mikey whether he has eaten ants because apparently this is what makes his singing voice so great now the truth is so apparently eating ants can actually help your throat in a particular way which is to help clear like a throat infection and this is because ants contain or produce in their stomach formic acid which is a sort of a counter irritant and it is a stringent that can help sort of of if your throat is inflamed can help disinflame it I suppose is the term I'm obviously not a medical doctor here and I would ask you at all at this point to not treat what I'm saying right now as medical advice <laughs> if your kid has a sore throat I probably don't suggest feeding them ants and I don't think many doctors would suggest you do either but it does apparently help keep a throat infection away or at bay so perhaps this one is plausible that if you had a good singing voice and you got sick and then you ate ants potentially it would help restore your good singing voice so this one, I'm not going to say is busted. I'm not going to say it's true. I think this is one that's in the category for me of plausible. And if anybody has got like additional research and wants to leave a comment below or set the matter straight, please leave a comment below and I'd love to read it. The next myth we're looking at today is this one of eating nuts can make you grow pimples. From my research, it could be any type of nut, but apparently the more nuts you eat, the more pimples you will get. Apparently this is particularly for women, so I think men can eat nuts without getting pimples. And I think if men were at risk of this one, you'd see a lot more, because canto boys with the sort of pistachios and a bottle of tandwai would all just be covered in pimples. And I don't see Philippine women eat that many nuts, although I guess like, yeah, sometimes kili nut, cashew nut, manga nut. <laughs> Pero tingin mo, totoo kaya yung sinasabi nila na 
nakapimple daw ito. Ay, hindi. Ba't nila pinapakalat yun? Chismis lang yun. Mga ano na nagsabi nila, mga kumpanyang gumagawa ng corny. <laughs> So, I don't know, I find this hard to believe, particularly given I come from Australia where this myth does not exist and see people eat nuts all the time and it's just never been associated whatsoever. I'm skeptical of this one. Now, there are some studies that sort of look at different types of diet and how do they relate to, say, acne and I guess maybe more like oil-rich or greasy foods could be correlated to, to acne and nuts are actually quite rich in oil, but there's no conclusive study I'm aware of that there is actually a link between eating nuts and pimples and having actually done a bit of research on this I don't believe it leave your comments below if you think we've got that one wrong but I'm calling that one busted so the third myth we're looking at today is around shopao being made of cat's meat and of course some smart Filipinos like, oh, I guess you would call that show meow. Well done, great pun. I do love a good pun, that's a particularly enjoyable one. So whatever smart Alec came up with the show meow is your living legend. But some Filipinos believe that the show pao is made from cat's meat. And this sort of, I think is one of those ones that sprung up centuries ago. But show pao was cooked in Benondo, the heart of the Chinese immigrant and merchant community here in the Philippines, even during the Spanish period. And there are a lot of cats in that area. And I think this is one that more likely than not started with people sort of gossiping about the Chinese merchants or traders of Shopao and saying like, oh, you know, they're putting cat meat in. They're not buying good quality meat. And that might have been out of competition. You spread rumors about your business competitors who are doing well in the restaurant scene. Uy, Jane! Ano yan? Shopao? Ano flavor? Ah, uh, asado. Pusa daw yan eh. But on the other hand, I am aware that certainly when I was growing up in Indonesia during the monetary crisis that swept the whole region, times were really tough. And at that time, it was undeniable that cats and dogs both were just got, went missing from the streets. Very hard to find cats and dogs, stray ones on the street at that time. And you know what was happening. I mean, nobody really talked about it, but that many stray animals missing, it means that they're being eaten by a population who can't afford to buy other forms of meat. So they start just basically catching the stray animals and cooking them up in some way. And show seems like a pretty good way if you were going to eat cat meat or something it seems like a pretty good way to kind of hide it in the food and that might have been done for purely economic reasons not out of a desire to save money but out of a desire actually just to eat and have sustenance right which I can kind of understand and appreciate that when times are tough people will, will eat whatever is available but if you sort of fast forward to 21st century Philippines there may be some dodgy vendor out there who's putting cat meat in but usually if it doesn't cost particularly more money to put in real meat why would you put in cat me. That's really what I'm asking. And I think most of the Chinese restaurant owners, they put up those like glass see-through windows around their kitchens now so you can like see in the quality of everything that they're producing and the ingredients that they're using. So for me, this one is highly implausible. I'm going to say busted. If anybody has like an experience that they demonstrably saw somebody prepare shou miao in the last 10 years in Manila, please leave a comment below. But I think this one's not true. So next on my list is the idea that eating healthy food is expensive. And I think you guys already know what I'm going to say about this because this is like half of what I'm advocating for with this channel is that I think Filipinos can and should be eating healthier. And actually Filipino food cooked in the 1800s was actually quite healthy compared to how it's being prepared today with a lot more factory foods being used in the last 50 or 80 years here in the Philippines. So I think this myth kind of springs up because there's been I think a push by these big food companies to make factory and processed food really really affordable. These little thingy packets being sold everywhere in the Philippines for six pesos for this it makes it look really cheap but I would argue that it's actually a false economy this notion that the factory foods are so much cheaper especially when you're buying thingy it's often in like a per serve base it's not that economical so I think we need to sort of break up like is eating healthy food expensive versus is eating healthy food more expensive than eating factory processed food because the first statement I think is not true I think the second statement probably is true and what I mean there is that syempre naman kung galing sa factory yung lahat ng pagkain mo syempre mura yun because it's being produced in industrial scale so on average calorie per peso will be probably cheaper if it's coming straight out 
out of a factory. They produce it in bulk, off the production line, into a box, into the store, and you buy it. On the other hand, the fresh supply chain, it's usually perishable, the vegetables don't last for a long time, and because of that, you have to get your vegetables to market quickly, you have more wastage, more spoilage, and that means that typically that food is going to cost more compared to a box of stuff that basically is fully preserved, never expires, which can sit there for ages. So it is fundamentally, factory foods will typically be cheaper, but it doesn't mean that healthy food or fresh food is expensive or needs to be expensive. And I think this really comes down to a bit of planning and effort, because with a bit of planning and effort, actually eating fresh and eating healthy is not as expensive as one thinks. Instead of rushing out to like Rustan's and buying that expensive piece of cauliflower broccoli, you go, well, on market day, I will go and buy things that are in season and that stay in the fridge for a couple of days before expiring. That's actually a pretty good way to buy and eat healthy. So it's about buying in bulk when the vegetables are cheap. And then when you're cooking them, you do stuff like yung mga dahon vegetables, you cook first. Yung mga vegetables that tataga sila sa ref kung halimbawa. Those vegetables with long expire, you cook at the end of the week. So I'm calling this one a myth. I think that Filipinos generally need to accept that healthy food doesn't actually have to be expensive. And the more we can actually learn about how to get it and eat it, the better. And you can learn all of that from watching this show. So keep watching our cabano. And my last myth today is this idea of eating sweet potatoes can make you fart. Filipinos have a healthy obsession, I think, with foods that can solve LBM, help with constipation, help you fart, create, cause you to fart. So this myth is really in that category of Filipino belief. So this myth is even encompassed in sort of a children's song which goes Natu tulog, Natu tulog, si baby, si baby, bigya nang kamote, bigya nang kamote, pampa utot, pampa utot. I didn't know that we needed a song for it, but Filipinos have one. But there is some science behind this one, to my surprise. I was like, oh yeah, you know, this sounds silly. But there are a number of vegetables and root crops that are known to increase, say, gas production in the human digestive system. Sorry, that's the scientific way of describing it. So Sweet potatoes are a crop that are known to contain polysaccharides, and I don't know if I put that correctly. And these are a type of carbohydrate that our intestinal bacteria will feed on, and as they consume it, they produce or give off fart gas effectively. That's a slightly less scientific way of describing it. So beans, corn, bell pepper, cauliflower, and cabbage, eggs, lentils, cashews, and radish are some of the other veggies known to increase farting in humans. So that one, I believe, is actually true. I'm going to call that one factually based. And that's it. That's our five Filipino food myths for today. So if you want to contest any of my determinations today on these myths, please leave a comment. If you have other Filipino food myths that you would like Chris Urbano to go and bust for you, also leave a comment below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe here. Click that little bell, wherever it is, to like get the notifications on releasing new videos. And of course, check out the Facebook page where you can join Team Cabano and get in touch with us for all of the giveaways that we're doing with the show, win some free stuff. So check out the page there. There's lots more about Filipino food and cooking over there. So that's everything for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye now. Um, show meow. Now I'm just going to keep calling it show meow, not show pal. Show meow is catchy. Take 1000. Be <laughs>